Good morning, my name is uh, Mike Sharico. Uh, I'm from Burnwood Industries. Uh, so what I want to talk about is building a profitable business, uh, touch on some of the things that I've already even spoke about this morning, and uh, you know the stories and the process that I started to get to where I am, and you know, good, the good and bad of what happened. Uh, so, oh, there we go. All right, so I started selling win uh, firewood in the winter of 2010. Uh, it was a side business to, I had a landscaping company at the time. We started out of a parent's backyard. Uh, this is a picture of us at the time. We used an axe and we rented a log splitter. Um, that's how we got started. During that winter, we saw that there was a big demand in our area for the material and not enough supply to, to fulfill it. So we looked at it as a business we were interested in. Um, over the past two years, we continued, continued spending our own, uh, splitting our own firewood and uh, the demand began to exceed our production. So our equipment couldn't produce nearly what we were selling. So what we did was we started going to other companies that were selling their own firewood. And we would go to them and say, listen, I'll buy your whole pile cash money for $100 a cord today, but I'll move it in a week. So most people are not going to sell it for that cheap, but when you offer them the cash, somebody that split 100 cords for the year, they're willing to take it. And what that did ultimately was flush out the competition and take their market share. We didn't realize we were doing that at the time, but it worked to our advantage because now they don't have any customers to sell to except for me. So I'm not taking their customers and they're not selling to anybody but me. And it you know, worked out pretty well. We still do, that, still do that to this day. 2012 is when we started Burnwood Industries. Um, our primary goal is to sell a high quality product for an affordable price in large volumes. Uh, it's, this is our first yard. Um, that was our, our main goal to get started with. We rented, rented the yard, we purchased a log truck and the Timberwolf TW6 uh, log splitter. That's how we got started. We sold the landscaping company to get the funds to do so. We split, spent the whole summer splitting the wood. Um, come September of that year, we bought our first processor, which was a Rapido Loco. Uh, it was a great machine to get us started with. And we also bought a TW10 log buster. Our operation was selling strictly green wood, no season whatsoever. Uh, we sold the green wood for a reduced price. We sold it in high volumes and we would deliver it to anybody, anywhere. As long as you were willing to pay me to bring it to you, we will go anywhere. Uh, we had a minimum order of three cords and we were selling to homeowners. We found that that was a good market for us to be in because we were trying to sell to people that were looking to heat their homes primarily, nobody else, not for enjoyment or anything like that. So we did this for uh, a number of years, and it brings us to 2014. We spent the next, between 2012 and 2014, we spent the time building a business plan and trying to find an investor to get us to where we wanted to be. 2014, we finally found a pro, uh, an investor. Uh, it's a company called Downs Tree Service. They were uh, you know, good enough to help us out quite a bit. We bought the Multitech 2040, and we transitioned into doing pretty much just wholesale firewood. So I want to talk now, that's a little history about how we got started and what we did, I want to talk now about building the business. I think this is extremely, extremely important. If you haven't done it, I think it's really important to build a business plan. Really get into the projections of it, your three to five year projections, how you're going to sell the wood, how much you plan on selling the wood, how much you plan on growing every year, your investment goals, what types of equipment do you want to buy, where do you plan on spending the money, how do you uh, plan on saving it, and in what time frame you got to set a budget and stick to your budget. I, I really believe that this year business plan is going to help you get, get wherever you want to be. Um, including in that is sourcing your wood. If you plan on selling 100 cords, you sell, plan on selling 1,000 cords. How are you going to get that material? That's a question that you need to ask yourself. Um, deciding on your customer base. Do you want to sell packages? Do you want to sell wholesale? Do you want to sell to homeowners? Do you want to sell to smaller portions? You need to answer those questions as you're getting through the business plan. And then you need to set your price and build your brand through marketing. Uh, I think this is a very, very important thing. If you don't do it or if you, if you have a supplement company, you have a logging company, tree service, you're probably looking at your numbers, but you're not doing it on the firewood end, and it needs to be done. You have to have a business plan. I, I truly believe in it. Uh, I just want to talk on sourcing material. We use only residential wood. We do not use any logging wood. We get some nice, what you would call, poles that come in. Um, the pros and cons to them, with the residential wood, we actually charge companies to take in their material. So if you're going to come to me with a log truck of big nasty wood, I'm going to charge you three, four, five hundred bucks just to drop that material off. So we're starting off in the black, which is great. What would be your options? Do you think you use something like 
because of where I am, I'm in an urban setting, there really is a lack of options. You have to find somebody to take the wood or split it in fire with yourself. So I'm in a, a good advantage in the sense that we're, we're fulfilling a recycling need. They need us. So you know, the other options is a landfill, but by us, there's not that. So it's other recycling companies, mulch, co excuse me, mulch companies, things like that. Um, you could also take the wood for free. If you're in a point where you're out of material and you need something, you could take the wood for free. Uh, and this leaves the tree companies and landscapers needing you, you not needing them. And you wind up with a lot more byproducts. The cons, obviously, are they're, it's not really sufficient. We are not splitting. When we use logging wood, we're able to do three to five cords an hour, no problem. With the wood that we use, it's much less. You're on a two-cord basis. Um, you get a lot more waste. It's very tough on the equipment. And uh, the shit that's in there, metal, I've cut into logs where there's concrete in it. I mean, it really is. Uh, it's, it's a lot. And you obviously have additional work. Logging wood, it's efficient, no waste. Um, it's ready to split right away, but you're paying a lot for that. So you're paying r roughly, give or take, $100 a cord. Sometimes it exceeds that, but in what I found in my market, it's roughly $100 a cord. We're paying $26 a cord to have our wood processed, which is, you know, it's huge. It gives us the ability to do what we need to do. Um, you're reliant on the log company and the weather. If it's a wet spring, the wood's not coming out of the forest, so you're not going to be able to, to do it. The wood, the price is going to fluctuate depending on what mills are buying, what pulp's doing. So you're really relying on somebody else. You need to be reliant on yourself, in my opinion. Not saying it's right or wrong, but that's what I think. Uh, these are some pictures. Uh, we're right outside of New York City. Yeah, right outside of New York City. So this is some of the pictures of the residential wood. We use a stump shear. We used to use the, the log buster to get it going. It wasn't uh, going fast enough for us. So what we use is a stump shear, and we rip down any diameter log, 20 feet long, 10 feet long, whatever the size is, and we make this product. We put it on the process, and we're able to split it. Problem is, you got odd, odd shapes, triangles, squares. Some wood is smaller than others, but you know this is just for you to see what that wood looks like and how it's usable. Uh, you know, your market. You got your wholesale versus homeowner. Your volume and your price, and your quality and your quantity. A lot of people think because you're selling wholesale, your quality is going to be reduced. I don't believe that. I want every single piece of my firewood to be packaged quality firewood. We sell most of our wood by the tractor trailer load. We started off doing residential, selling you know two, three cord minimums, and that was in the smaller trucks. We still do that, and we'll do that with seasoned wood, but the majority of our material is green in tractor trailers out the door for people to make other money. We kind of look at it as the mulch industry. People grind mulch, sell the landscapers, sell the nurseries, things like that. We're trying to create that with the firewood. That is walking floor, yeah. We use paddle floors and walking floors. Um, uh, the paddle floors are a little faster, walking floors are a little slow. Um, they hold roughly 10, 12 cords in them. Uh, people say 15, people say 18. With 100 yards, you're getting about 10, 12 cords. Um, cost per unit, you got to figure out what your, what your cord is costing, which a lot of people, I don't know if you guys do or do not know that, you should. Uh, you know, just on the basic, what's your labor and fuel? Then add everything else in, your loans, your rent, your insurance, everything. Um, seasoned versus green wood. I always have looked at things as seasoned wood is taking up time. You're putting it on the ground, you're taking six months, nine months, a year of space that you could be doing something else with. So I look at that space for what I am because I'm in an urban setting, it's very expensive. So I look at it as I'm able to re reduce my cord price slightly because I'm not putting the time into it. So I think that that's something that people should look into as a market that, that they don't. Um, Providing a quality product and the price will reflect. Don't come out saying, oh, I want you know, 800 bucks a cord, like uh, the gentleman was, Brian was saying before. Your product needs to reflect that, and the price will come with it. When we sell our season product, we're selling it for top dollar, but it's because you're, you're giving them what, they're at, what they want. You're not bullshitting them. You're not saying, hey, listen, it's dry, but it's been cut down for a week. You're not giving them big chunks. You're giving them a perfect piece of, of quality fire with the whole wet. Um, Delivery charge. When I first started, I used to charge the fuel. 40 bucks, I'll bring it to you, whatever. If you were further, 60 bucks. I've since realized that it's a separate business. It's complete. You have two companies. You have a firewood company and you have a delivery company. You need to be compensated on both. You need to look at it as when you pop a tire, you get you blow a tranny, whatever it is, it costs a lot of money. You have a truck, $65,000, $100,000 truck, a $25 an hour driver, and then fuel at $4 a gallon. So. When the customers complain, oh, well, you know, 150 bucks for delivery, that's a little expensive. Okay, well, here's why. I have, I have to have these costs covered. And when you explain it to them, they, they kind of sing a different, uh, different tune. 
do not negotiating price. I have customers call me all the time. Oh, well, you know, can you do a little better? I saw this, I saw that. No. First off, I never say no. That's, that's not the way to go. I ask why. Maybe they're going to give me a benefit that I haven't realized yet. Maybe they're going to say, well, you know, I own a chain of pizza stores. This is for my house. Uh, you know, if, you, if it, I like the material, I'll buy it for everything else. So it opens up the door for them to show me something that I don't see. A line that I use a lot is when they say, oh, well, you know, it's a little expensive. I don't know. You think you could do it for 25 bucks cheaper? I say, listen, I don't call Verizon when I get my phone bill and say, look, I, I don't agree with that. Can you do it for cheaper? I don't go. I bought a pair of jeans the other day for 80 bucks. I didn't go to the counter and say, how about 50? That's not the way it works. These customers are calling you because they saw your price. They already want the product. They, they're just trying to get the best deal. So don't negotiate. Don't give yourself up. And same thing with the, with the delivery. Have your price and don't let them beat you up on it. It's just very important in my opinion. <clears throat> Marketing and sales tips. Uh, Building a brand, not an item. You're not just selling firewood. You're building a brand for yourself. You need to convince your pro your customer that your product is superior than anything else in the market. Where, you know, they call me and say, "Listen, you know, ah, you know, I got to talk to talk to my husband. I got to talk to them." Okay, well, look, my product is not, sitting on pavement. It's guaranteed to be dry. You can call somebody else, and they're not going to give that to you. When I sell a green, I'm selling them on the aspect of you are controlling the product. I'm going to sell it to you in, in uh, June, July. You're going to stack it, and you're going to know exactly the day that wood was stacked, so you know how dry it is. You're not relying on ABC Firewood to tell you, oh, yeah, it's dry, and it gets to your house, and now you got burned. So I, I really always stress that to the, the clients that my product is superior because you are controlling it. You know what you're talking about. Um, I never leave a sale on the table. I don't think anybody should. If somebody calls you. I get this a lot, well, you know, let me talk to the wife or let me talk to the husband. I always go back to them and say, listen, no problem. Uh, you know, we're a very big company. It doesn't matter what time of the year. It doesn't matter if it's true or it's not true. I say to them, look, um, let me get your name and your uh, address. I'm going to put your, put your phone number on our list. You know, if, if right now I wouldn't be able to deliver it to you in a week or two anyway. It doesn't matter if that's true or not. That, now they, they have a hearing that you're a huge company. You're not able to get to them for a week or two, so they feel comfortable with you because you have uh, you know, you have a back behind you. So what I say is, let me get your name, your number, I'll put it down, and I'll call you in a week or two. If, you know, you go with somebody else, great, I'm, I'm happy for you. If not, then, you know, we'll, we'll make a deal happen. So I call them that Saturday or Sunday and say, listen, I'm putting my schedule together. Would, would you still like the delivery? Oh, yeah, no problem. Now, what that's done is they're no longer going to search for somebody else. They might price shop, but they already know that you're going to call them. Or if they completely forgot about it, you call them, you remind them, and you get that deal. So I never leave a deal on the top. I'll talk to you for 20 minutes <laughs> to get your phone number and the email, like you said, too. Very important. Get as much information from it as possible. Uh, free marketing. Facebook, Instagram, the internet is great. We do, I've never spent a dollar on marketing. This is going to be the first year we're going into a large marketing campaign. I've sold thousands of cord and I've never spent a single dollar. Craigslist, blogs, you go to different towns, like for me, NJ.com has blog sites for every single town and you go in there and you get people talking about it you know you pretend to be somebody else and you talk oh I bought firewood from these guys they're great and then all of a sudden you go to one person and you ask them hey can you you know I'll give you five bucks off the, the firewood if you leave a comment on my Facebook page and I'm not really giving you five bucks off I've inflated the price slightly so that I'm able to take that five dollar loss I, I truly believe the internet is the way to go like I said I'm gonna do a marketing campaign this year but Facebook and Instagram all these things are great, and it's a great way to get your name out there for free. You don't have to spend a dollar. You just have to spend time. Craigslist, I go out, I post four ads every single day. doesn't matter what time of the day is. I'm posting them no matter what. Press. You need to go out. These are some of the articles that were written about us. Um, get your name out there and build your brand. It's not a matter. When you have these things and you're able to put these in your advertisements, people feel ten times more comfortable with you. They say, oh, this is a real company. It's not somebody that splits firewood just as a hobby. When, when customers call me, I tell them, look, the advantage that you have going with me is I will be here next year. I'm not looking to screw you. I'm never running out of material. I'm going to be here. So they are always more comfortable to go with you when you appear bigger than you are. And that's always been my primary goal, and we're building into it. Yeah, and it's great to walk in your office and have your magazine framed, you know? Great feeling. Um, so that's pretty much all I got there. Anybody have any questions or anything like that?
Sure. We do mulch. We do a full recycling. So we do mulch, topsoil, and firewood. Those are the products we sell. Um, that's our byproduct. So with our waste, like with a tumbler, we'll catch all the junk. We'll bring the junk and we'll turn it into uh, into mulch. You can sort through it and get kindling out of it. Um, we also charge companies to come in and uh, obviously dump or any type of organic debris, and we'll make that into mulch and topsoil as well. Uh, how do you sell the kindling is the question there. Uh, so what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put it in a bag, a little potato sack. I always have uh, you know, a sea land container full of potato sacks. And with any homeowner purchase, I'm giving you one bag for free. They don't realize it. When they get the wood, tumblers are great. And I suggest anybody that's going into a processor get a tumbler because it helps sort out the uh, material. Unfortunately, it doesn't sort everything out. So there is kindling in the load already. So I'll tell the customer, look, the load comes with one bag of kindling for free. Would you like anything else? $10 a bag. So yeah, you know what, let me get five of them. They don't realize they were getting 20 in the load anyway, but now I've just sold them five extra ones. And it costs me 10 minutes at the end of the day, the two operators get out, sort, sit through whatever they can reach on the top of the dumpster, you put them in potato bags, and that's it. Anything else? Yes, yeah, uh, we have a Diamond Z that we use for the grinding. We have a horizontal and a tub. For what I found, what I do uh, and where I am, I don't necessarily have much competition because I'm so close to the city that it's everybody. Everybody's selling their landscape or tree company that are looking for guys to do to find time, fill time, split at the end of the day, a cord or whatever it is. So they're so much smaller than I am that I'm targeting companies to. I'm targeting nurses. I'm targeting other firewood dealers to say, listen, you know, buy the wood for me at whatever the price may be, and you can mark it up in your area. Um, you have to be careful with the laws of the EAB and everything like that. You'll learn a little bit more about that later. I personally find that there's ways to sift through all of that. There's loopholes in all of it, and if you have your truck drivers equipped with the right paperwork, God forbid they were to be pulled over, you seem, in my opinion, I've never had an issue with it. I've never been pulled over. When, I have, when you have an issue, you have the paperwork with you, and you have to know how to kind of look through the laws at what quarantine zones can actually trade, excuse me, trade with each other, and that's, that's where I target market.